Most species only use three to five percent of its cerebral capacity. But it isn't until we reached human beings at the top of the animal chain that we finally see a species use more of its cerebral capacity. 10% may not seem like much, but it's a lot if we look at all we've done with it. Let's imagine for a few moments what our life would be like if we could access, let's say, 20% of our brains. To understand how we use more than 10% of the brain, first, let's take a look at the brain. The brain as we know it is made up of three major parts, the cerebrum, the cerebellum, and the brainstem. The cerebrum is important for a majority of cognitive functions. The cerebellum is important in integrating balance, coordination, planning, and timing of movement. The brainstem is important in regulating things that happen automatically, such as breathing, heartbeats, and digestion. As you can see, all three of these parts of the brain are important. Using only one of these parts, which are much more than 10% of the entire brain, will result in you not being able to think, move, or breathe. But perhaps, you thought the 10% myth only applied to the cerebrum. So let's take a closer look at the cerebrum. The cerebrum is the biggest part of the brain and is usually divided up into four lobes, known as the frontal, parietal, temporal, and occipital lobes. Each of these lobes have a specific function, including conscious thought, emotional responses, senses of touch, taste and smell, language processing, auditory processing, and visual processing. So again, you see that not using 90% of the cerebrum would result in losing the majority of these functions. And that's not something that we see that often in the real world. In fact, let's go one step deeper and see what would happen if you suffered injuries and lost some functions in your brain. This is Mr. Phineas Gage. Mr. Gage here was a railroad worker who was injured with a spike that speared through his brain while he was working. Miraculously, he survived. But people started to notice that his personality changed after from a hard-working, restrained gentleman to a rude, passionate, and angry individual. That's how we figured out that the frontal lobe had a role in emotion and thought. It also showed that even though he lost more than 10% of the brain that he was clearly using, he was able to live on. For the longest time, our understanding of the brain was built on cases like these. When someone bruises the back of their brain and lost their vision, we understood that the occipital lobe played a role in visual processing. When a person with a lesion in the temporal lobe lost the ability to speak, we learned that it was our language center. Nowadays, we have more sophisticated technology that allows us to clearly see that we use more than 10% of our brain. Machines, such as the electroencephalograph, allow us to measure brainwave activity to know which parts of our brain are active when we do different things. Some other brain imaging techniques include fMRI and PET-CT scanners. These allow us to go even more in depth and get a 3D image of our brain, showing exactly where there is activity and when it occurs. Countless studies and medical exams have shown that we consistently use almost all of our brain. Our brain isn't one big computer that we only use 10% of. It's a complicated organ that has different regions, all specialized for different things. Most of these things we just take for granted, like the ability to see, hear, breathe, and move. But the brain has to be constantly controlling all of these things. Add to that the limitless imagination and capabilities of our brains and all we have accomplished. And you'll see it's impossible that we're only using 10% of our brains.